Welcome to MathCast Edition 15, where we will be looking at strategies for solving a mixture of factoring problems. So strategies that we are going to employ are basically things we want to look for before we start factoring. These ideas will save us some time and potentially a great deal of grief uh, and confusion if we look for them and plan for them in advance. So the first thing we want to look for in every factoring question is common factoring. If we then notice there are two terms, we want to be considering a possible difference of squares. If there's three terms, we want to be considering a possible decomposition problem. So let's get started. Example one. So my strategies here, I want to consider the possibility there's a common factor and because there are two terms, I want to have the possibility of a difference of squares in my mind as well. What I can notice is that 3 and 12 are not perfectly squared terms, so going straight into a difference of squares is not possible. But what I might see, a little practice, is that there is a common factor of 3. And once I've common factored out the 3 out front, then I can investigate what's left behind inside the brackets. Notice the 3 isn't going to go anywhere. And I should notice that that's a difference of squares. So I can rewrite the x squared term in brackets, the squared term, and the 4 as 2 in brackets, all squared. Now if you review the difference of squared algebraic patterning techniques in previous math casts, we can then map out those terms into their respective positions. And then I'll clean up the brackets, and we can get a final solution of 3 times the br binomial x minus 2 and the other binomial of x plus 2. And if we were to expand that and collect like terms, we should find we get all the way back up to our original of 3x squared minus 12. Please note, the 3 is still here. It hasn't disappeared, even though I common factored it on the first line. Example 2. Again, I'd like to look for the possibility of a common factor. And because it's two terms, I'd like to look for the possibility of a difference of squares, even though the way it's written right now, it has an addition sign here. So just pointing that out, negative 14 and 126 are not perfectly squared terms. However, if I common factor a negative 14 out, what I'm left with is x squared minus 9y squared, and now this has a nice possibility of being a difference of squares. So when I look at those terms a little more closely, I can see that I can rewrite x squared as just x in a bracket all squared, and the 9y squared as 3y all inside a bracket squared. That follows the pattern for finding a difference of squares. So I can break those two pieces down using the patterns discussed earlier in previous math casts, and then I can drop the final brackets, and there's my finished solution. And again, if I multiplied all of this out, collected like terms, I should get right back to where I started. Note the negative 14, again, even though it was factored on the first line, it doesn't go anywhere, it stays in the problem right through till the end. Example 3. This one I have three terms. So I want to be considering the possibility of a common factor. And because it's three terms, I also want to consider the possibility of a decomposition problem. So if I blindly stumble into trying to do a decomposition problem, I need two numbers that multiply for 384 and add for 40. Yikes. Most problems shouldn't get to be this large or this difficult uh, that you're doing in your regular schoolwork. So what that normally means is that you've missed something. In this case, what we've missed is a factor of 4. So if we common factor 4 out first, then we apply our sentence. I need two numbers that multiply for 24 and add for 10 using just the trinomial inside the brackets. So that would be my product. There is my sum. That leaves us with some smaller numbers to work with, and we can find that the answer is to be 6 and 4. So then I'll continue with my decomposition. I'm just going to rearrange this a little bit. 
Notice I split up the middle term, the 10x, into 6x plus 4x, just like we've done in previous examples. So all I'm doing here is the common fa or the factoring by decomposition illustrated in previous MathCADs. Notice I'm just working inside the brackets. The 4 stays out front. It doesn't disappear. And as I work through the problem, I eventually come down to a 4 out front multiplied by two binomials. And these two binomials are the terms that make up the trinomial that was in here at the beginning. So my final solution would look like this. And again, notice the four is still with the solution. It hasn't, even though it's been factored off, there's sometimes a tendency to factor it out and stop writing it. You need to write the four there to maintain your balance. Final example. Again, possible common factor, possible decomposition here. What I want to notice is that these are all have multiples of 15. If I failed to see that there were multiples of 15 in there, I would be solving some very large numbers in my decomposition. In this case, 450 is the product and negative 45 is the sum. Now you may be able to see these numbers and you can proceed here and you'll end up doing your common factoring on the last line. It will work, but normally we'd like to make these numbers as small as possible before we begin. So in this case, I'm going to factor out a negative 15. There it is up front. And you can see that now the trinomial inside is very small. And when I apply my guiding sentence, I need two numbers that multiply for 2 and add for 3. Those are a lot easier to find than multiply for 450 and sum for negative 45. I then continue with my decomposition, breaking up the middle terms, and then just following the decomposition techniques inside these brackets. Again, note the negative 15 doesn't go anywhere. It stays put. You can pause this at any time just to read what's going on. All I'm doing is decomposing inside, and I come up with the final solution of negative 15 times the bracket of x plus 2 and the bracket of x plus 1. So therefore, our final solution from trinomial form to completely factored form would look like that. Once again, thank you for your time. If you have any suggestions, questions, comments, concerns, please send an email to childs underscore math at yahoo.com. We thank you for listening. <laughs>